Out of all the tournaments that happen in football, Champions League is the most exciting tournament for most fans, as it is the competition between the best teams of Europe, which is considered to have the best leagues in the world like Premier League, La Liga, Bundesliga, Serie A, etc. And the winner of the Champions League is considered to be the best team in the world. Now, the world has other teams and competitions as well, like Copa Libertadores or CAF Champions League, and there are people who might say that these competitions and teams are not far off from Champions League and Europe. So different bodies of football have tried arranging tournaments to settle this debate. For example, Intercontinental Cup or Club World Cup. And a tournament that decides which club is the best football club in the world sounds exciting. But until now, there hasn't been much excitement surrounding these competitions, majorly because the way these competitions were organized was, let's say, boring for lack of a better word. But that might change with the new format of the FIFA Club World Cup. So in this video, we'll obviously talk about the new FIFA Club World Cup and how it has the potential to change the hierarchy of biggest football competitions and football for that matter. So with that, let's begin our video. So for a competition that will place the best teams of different continents against each other, it has to be at a high level. The level of competition, the way the tournament should be organized must be top notch. But the tournaments that we have got so far are not there yet. And to understand why, we must first understand how these competitions worked, starting with Intercontinental Cup. This was a predecessor of the Club World Cup, but was organized by UEFA and Comnebol instead of FIFA. The idea was a competition between the best team in Europe versus the best team in South America, which are considered to be the two best footballing continents. It was a two-legged final between the Champions League winner and the winner of the Copa Libertadores, which is the UCL of South America. So just one two-legged tie and the team with the highest aggregate score wins. This competition began in the 1960 with Real Madrid beating Penarol of Uruguay to lift the Intercontinental Trophy for the first time. Now this tournament was far from perfect. Apart from the flaws in organizing the tournament, almost every year the fans witnessed violence. A major controversy took place in the 1969th edition. The match was between AC Milan and Estudiantes de la Planta from Argentina. Milan won their home leg 3-0 and in the away leg at Argentina, it got dirty. And without getting much into the details, it was a brutal game, with two Italian players getting seriously injured and one player even went to jail. This match was a bloodbath which resulted in many European teams rejecting the idea of participating in this competition going forward. So there were many flaws in this competition, like disagreements with Comnebol and UEFA, the lack of financial incentives, the violent and brutal games, foul play from the part of organizers, calendar problems, and teams rejecting to take part in this competition. So UEFA and Comnebol asked FIFA to intervene and streamline things, but FIFA rejected. They said they won't intervene in something which is not regulated by them. For FIFA, this tournament was just a friendly between the UCL and Copa Libertadores winners. So later FIFA opened the idea of supervising an intercontinental cup but with the teams from every continent taking part. But that idea was rejected by UEFA and Comnebol as their interest lied in the teams from their continents. So then intercontinental cup went through few changes like being organized in Japan and renamed to Toyota Cup. But that also couldn't reach the expected levels. So there had been a lot of back and forth, because of which a foundation to organize an international cup competition was laid already and FIFA finally decided to organize the FIFA Club World Championships in the year 2000 in Brazil. Now keep this in mind that Intercontinental Cup was not yet discontinued and will be played for three more years. But the first FIFA Club World Championship competition had eight participants, representing every continent except Antarctica of course. In the first edition, there were two teams from Brazil and two from Europe, Man United and Real Madrid. But it was an all-Brazilian final between Vasco da Gama and Corinthians, which Corinthians won on penalties. Now there have been several changes to the format of the Club World Championships, which we won't get into, but the one which we are used to with the knockout matches came in existence after UEFA, FIFA, Comnebol and Toyota agreed to merge the Intercontinental Cup with the Club World Championships. Under this format, seven teams representing the winners from all six confederations and one from the host nation will participate. The first round will be between the host nation team versus the champion of Oceanic Football Federation, basically the teams from Australia and New Zealand. Second round will be competed between the winner of this round and the teams from Asian, African and North American confederations. Then the two winners from these rounds will play against the winners of Champions League and Copa Libertadores in the semi-finals. And then the final and the winner will be crowned the club world champion. And that basically was the format of Club World Cup before this. It was an improvement from the Intercontinental Cup, but still, it never felt like the prominent competition between the best clubs in the world. 
and there are many reasons for that, including the short format of the competition, limited interest from fans, only one or two matches for UEFA and Comnebol clubs, etc. And FIFA in the past have attempted to change the format to include more teams and rescheduling the tournament to June or July. And it was very close to being a reality in 2019 but couldn't materialize due to the pandemic. But looking at how profitable the Champions League has been, FIFA understood that Club World Cup will be the key for making long-term sustainable profits. And on June 2023, FIFA confirmed that in 2025, the United States will host the new format of FIFA Club World Cup. This new format of Club World Cup will see 32 teams divided into 8 groups of 4 teams, with the top 2 teams in each group qualifying for the knockout stage. It will have the same format used in FIFA World Cup and will also be played every 4 year, unlike the current every year format. There will be 12 spots available for European sites with maximum 2 teams per country, followed by Comdenball with 6 spots and Asia's AFC, Africa's CAF and North America's CONCACAF will have 4 spots each. Oceanic Football Federation will have one team and one team will again come from the host nation. You can see the list of all qualified teams in the screen. Now the qualification criteria of these teams is based on their performance in the past 4 seasons of their confederation's premier competition like Champions League or Copa Libertadores. So an increased number of participants qualifying based on merit and higher number of teams from Europe and South America and a tournament format exactly like the FIFA World Cup. And that my friends would be a basic overview of how the new club World Cup would look like. And now let's understand what could it probably mean for football going forward. Now for obvious reasons, it will take some time until this tournament is established and attracts more and more people. But the changes that have happened signifies the following. The number of teams will be more than 4 times compared to the previous versions. And there will be more teams representing top leagues, which will make for a more competitive tournament. And viewers who normally watch European football mostly will get to see how their teams fare with that of teams and players from other continents. Then every team in this version of the competition will have an equal chance to win the whole thing. Unlike in the previous format where UEFA and Comnebol teams just had to play the semi-final and the finals. So winning this competition will be more difficult and would actually mean more. Apart from that, this competition happening every 4 years will raise the level of anticipation and people will be more interested to watch a tournament which would be very similar to World Cup or Euros happening at a favourable time. And I think for a competition of this level, this will be a good advantage. So what does this mean for the fans? Now the fans obviously want more and more football. They want to see their teams play and win. And club matches like the league or the Champions League are weekly affairs. But a tournament where the matches are happening every day for a month is obviously more exciting. We've seen fans travel to Euros and World Cup to support their country, but how would they support their clubs in a similar kind of tournament would be interesting to see. Another point that I believe would happen is that the latter half of this competition will be similar to Champions League. Now I'm all in for the underdogs here, but there are more chances that the teams from Europe make it to the knockout stages. And that would be the same as the UCL, but in the same country and matches happening almost every day. So from the fans perspective, it seems interesting. But what about the clubs and the players? Adding another tournament to an already hectic schedule won't be easy for the players. If you look at this from a player's perspective, they give it all the whole season for their clubs. And then they go with their country. And that too every other year. So there's a different motivation. And I know that this will happen every 4 year. But that year was supposed to be a break for the players. But now they will have to play another intense tournament. At a time when they would normally enjoy their holidays. So if I'm a player, I would think to myself that the earlier version where only one team qualified and they played just 2 matches, that version was better. And this is not just my opinion. In fact, FIFA themselves got a lot of pushback over the expanded version of the tournament. World Players Union, the FIFA Pro, the PFA and the World Leagues Association have expressed their concerns to FIFA. They've accused them of pushing players beyond their limits with significant injury risks because they are expanding its competitions. These associations want the event to be rescheduled and the international match calendar reformed to be more favourable for the players. So it is clear that the players and coaches are not as happy about the tournament as the fans. Do you remember that Carlo Ancelotti statement where he said that the players and clubs won't be that interested in participating and although Real Madrid detached themselves from Ancelotti's statement saying that they will participate but it is clear that even though this tournament will happen every 4 year, there is resentment against the new format. Now we must also take into account that where on one side this will be just a tournament for the European sites, for the teams from other continents this can be a good opportunity as it will not only showcase the talents of their players on a global stage but the potential revenue they can expect from this competition can change their fortune. And talking about the revenue. 
Now we've discussed the players and the club's perspective, the fans' perspective. But if we are to discuss the money involved, what do you think should be a decent number for the upcoming tournament? Let me break it down to you that it's not a small number. You see the prize money that Manchester City got for winning the 2023 Club World Cup, which was the earlier version, was 4 million according to the mirror. Not a big amount for a team like Man City when you look into their wage bill and other expenses, but again, they just had to play two matches to get that, so a decent amount. But if we look at the money in the new version, it's a substantially larger amount. It is said that 2 billion will be distributed to all the 32 teams that have qualified for the competition. That means every team is guaranteed a minimum of 50 million euros. Add to that the result-based bonuses and the winner can make around 100 million in total. And I don't think that's a small amount for any club. Now comparing that to the best club competition right now, which is the Champions League, qualifying for the round of 16 brings a team around 9.6 million. And an estimated total that Real Madrid made for winning the UCL was around 85 million this year and Man City made around 80 million in the previous year. So the winner of the Club World Cup is guaranteed to make more money than the Champions League winner. So basically what I'm trying to say is financially this tournament is going to be very attractive for the big clubs. And for any small club that qualifies, they can change their fortunes if they are good enough to reach the latter stages of this competition. So apart from the glory that comes from being crowned the club world champion, the money involved is for obvious reasons an added incentive for the players, the coaches and everyone involved. It is clear why FIFA wants to do this. You see, FIFA regulates the international tournaments and they generate money through sponsorships, TV rights, etc. So the fact of the matter is, more number of viewers means more earnings for them. And the numbers vary, but with 2023 Women's World Cup, FIFA generated a revenue of around 600 to 900 million euros, a good number. But in the Men's World Cup 2022, FIFA booked a sizable profit of 2.36 billion, and that's a huge number. But the problem is, Men's World Cup, which is their prominent competition, happens every four years. And if you compare that with UEFA, they made 4.3 billion in 2022-23 season. And in the previous year, it was 4.05 billion. But a year before that, they almost reached 6 billion mark because of the European Championships and are expected to surpass that number in 2024. And UEFA Champions League remains the prominent club competition in the world. So FIFA definitely looks at the Club World Cup like a huge opportunity, which they haven't properly tapped. And if it becomes a success, it will have the potential to be one of the major money-making tournaments not only in football but in global sports as a whole. Now can it reach that level is a different question. See for me it will take some time and I believe that Champions League will remain football's premier competition for near future. But things may change if Club World Cup gets a positive response in its first year. Add to that, the fact that this competition will get viewers from not only Europe but global football fans will also tune in and buy tickets. And slowly like the Champions League, the Club World Cup has potential to create a huge fan base. Now a very important point within this context is, I sometimes think about how Saudi disrupted European football by offering lots of money. And I imagine that there would have been many players who were attracted by the offers but did not switch sides because they would look straight up greedy. So what if an Al Nasser or Al Hilal beats European team in the final of Club World Cup and players all of a sudden are like I want to join the world champions. See I don't know, I just make videos on YouTube. But that can be a game changer. Because when you take into account all of these points, Club World Cup has potential to disrupt things and maybe become the premier competition in club football in near future. So what do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts, I respond to every single comment. Your likes means a lot, in fact any engagement will help with the algorithm. And if you subscribe, you get regular football videos for free. Anyways, thanks for watching and see you on the next one. Ciao.